On today's episode of MMA Odds Breaker, we recap UFC 130 Rampage vs. Hamill. We also break odds on four big upcoming fights. From Strike Force, Marlis Conan vs. Misha Tate. Also from Strike Force, Hodger Gracie vs. Muhammad Law. From UFC 135, Diego Sanchez vs. Matt Hughes. And from UFC Tough 14 finale, Michael Bisping vs. Jason Miller. Don't go anywhere, MMA Oddsbreaker is coming at you next. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Nick Kalikas, alongside Miguel Adorade. On today's show, we're going to look back at UFC 130 and the four main fights from that event. We broke the odds for those fights right here on the very first Odds Breaker show. That's right. It's been a while, but now we're finally at that point where we can go back and check out the opening odds and the closing odds and compare them. John Luther is also going to join us in just a few seconds, and he's going to help us break down his wagers for the event as well. And on today's Odds Breaker show, we're joined by Phil Baldacci of Scrap Pack Radio, as well as Jeremy Botter of HeavyMMA.com. That's right, both Phil and Jeremy are going to join me and help me break the odds before they even hit the sports books. Yep, they get first crack. Now let's go and bring John aboard. John Luther from MMAFA.TV, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks for having me back, Nick. All right, this is the point where we're going to go back again and uh, review what happened at UFC 130. We're going to review John's wagers, we're going to review the opening and closing lines, and what happened at the sports books if the sports book won or lost money. We're going to start off first again. Jackson versus Hamill. The opening odds were minus 245 on Quentin Jackson, comeback plus 195 on Matt Hamill. Now, John came in after the, the opening lines on the Oddsbreaker and bet Quentin Jackson a minus 245, 1225 to win a nickel. Um, the sportsbook line that hit the sportsbooks was at minus 260, comeback was plus 210. Now, very interesting thought here, Miguel, as well, is that the line actually closed at minus 340, comeback was plus 270. Now, but that doesn't reflect on what happened because actually at the sports books, they were a little bit heavier on uh, Matt Hamill. They actually received individually, they received more uh, individual bets on Hamill, and the larger action also came in on Hamill. So the result for the sports books, TKO win from Rampage ended up uh, making them money because they needed Rampage to win. Um, and he also won $500 as well, John. So congrats on that bet. Uh, give me your quick thoughts on Rampage versus Hamill. That comes to mind is that Rampage, it seems like everybody makes a big deal out of his weight and whether or not he's going to come prepared to fight. Uh, he showed very much this time that he is very easy, still in the uh, light heavyweight title picture, and I think he's going to be getting a title shot against John Jones. Matt Hamill, on the other hand, although he's very good, he, he's not in the, same le- uh, in the same league as Rampage, and I wish that he could move down to 185. I don't know if that's at all possible. We know that he's done well against guys like um, um, uh, Mark Munoz and uh, uh, Michael Bisping, but uh, I'd like to see him move down in weight, or other- otherwise he's going to condemn himself to basically be some kind of journeyman at 205. But it was a good fight, and I think that uh, Rampage proved that he's worthy to take on uh, whoever holds the title, and that happens to be John Jones. That's right. What about you, Miguel? The line closed at 340. Yep, and uh, Quentin fought himself back into the title picture, as John pointed out. I think, um, I think that'll be coming up for him, and I think he's still one of the more marketable fighters that the UFC has. All right, so again, just a quick recap. Good win for Rampage, and we're going to move on to the next fight, which was Brian Stan versus George Santiago. Now, this one, I got burned on myself. I opened Santiago, actually, as a slight favorite of minus 160. Now, everybody in the world, including John, came in, and uh, they bet Brian Stan. I just figured, I thought that Stan uh, should be the slight, slight underdog, because Santiago is a more well-rounded fighter, but I knew the knockout power from Brian Stan would be uh, a factor here. Um, the sportsbook line when it hit the books was minus 140 so a little bit lower for um, Santiago uh, the closing odds though were Brian Stan minus 155 the comeback was plus 125 and John like I said earlier you ended up popping on the plus money you took plus 130 so 500 dollars won you 975 congrats on that win as well 975 on a dog uh, give me your quick thoughts on Stan versus Santiago well, Brian Stan is a threat at 185 pounds. I had a feeling he was going to be something special, and a lot of people thought that whatever happened with Chris Lieben was somewhat of a coincidence. Uh, he got lucky. No, he proved that he is the real deal, and he took out a very game Jorge Santiago. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Brian Shaw getting a title shot. I think he's he's on his way, and I have, I have very few doubts that he can beat some of the top guys at uh, 185. I'm looking forward to it. Now, 
Miguel, I did underestimate Brian Stan uh, coming into this fight. It won't happen again because he's looked great at 185. What's your thought? He has, and he beat a veteran, uh, Santiago, returning to the UFC after you know winning titles overseas. And uh, I think, uh, as John also pointed out, that uh, Stam is establishing himself in the upper echelon of the of the weight division. Yeah, I, I think he's uh, g definitely going to be a legit uh, contender in that division uh, from here on out. I mean, he's got some, definitely has my respect. Let's go ahead and move on to the next fight. It was a battle between Frank Mir and Roy Nelson. The line opened up nearly a pick. Uh, Mir came in at minus 130. Now, John, you actually came in and took the even money bet, 250 to win 250, on Roy Nelson. Now, at the sports books, the line opened at minus 125, and the closing line was pick at minus 115. Now, the action at the sports books did see Roy Nelson getting more individual bets, and the heavier action also came in on Roy Nelson. So the sports books actually needed Frank Mir to win the fight. Um, and actually, unfortunately, John, you lost this fight, but it was only 250. Uh, give me your reaction on this fight. Well, first off, what an ugly, ugly fight. Uh, both guys need to get their conditioning and their weight under control. I think Frank Mir, he's, he's racking up the pounds, and he needs to keep an eye on that. But even though he looked terrible, Roy Nelson looked that much worse. Uh, I've got a, a bad habit of, I guess, uh, overrating uh, Roy Nelson and maybe underrating Frank Mir. Uh, Frank Mir is a very, very good heavyweight. I'm not convinced that he'll ever get a shot at the title again, but he's quite good. Uh, I messed up. If I had my way, I probably wouldn't have touched that fight, but something felt right about Roy Nelson, and uh, it's a mistake. What can you do?